it started at the end. Because of course it did. They always started from the end. You can't spell beginning without the word end. Or some dumb philosophical bullshit like that. An influence of 20 years on my brain. Like the influence of a bottle of beer on a badly bloated belly with a bursting liver full of bile. Or a bullet in my brain, breaking the barriers of blood and bone by being. This sentence has been brought to you by the letter B. Once upon a time, it was about a rookie cop avenging the death of his wife and daughter. And then something about sexy femme fatales and a Russian mob war. And finally, a hangover from start to finish. A mishmash of movies and movement muddled with mediocre filters, making the illusion of what a hangover feels like. What was once a groundbreaking and refreshing take on the action genre, further perfected in the sequel, seems like it lost its charm. But maybe that was the point. Maybe the point was, it was outdated. It was old. It's subtle, but it's there. Times have changed, and you had along with it even though you didn't want to. And sometimes people get mad at you for changing. But at this point, what choice did you have? These bastards treated me like pasta. Just throw me against the wall and see if it sticks. What they didn't expect was, more people were vegan now and egg noodles just don't cut it. I wasn't for everyone's taste anymore. I'm just gonna get settled in. Time to move on. Get on with my life. Yes. Set nine years after the second Max Payne, we find our title character in South America working security detail after he had left the NYPD and fled from New York due to him shooting the son of a mob boss we see in a flashback. Much like every Max Payne game, we progress through Max's story in a disjointed, disorienting, drama-fueled roller coaster ride. Max is currently working security detail for a man named Rodrigo Branco and his family. A group of pirates kidnap his wife Fabiana Branco, a second attempt after their first failed attempt a few weeks prior. Max and his partner Raul Passos head to the ransom to pay for her safety. Things of course don't go well as they're ambushed by a privately owned military group. This begins Max's downfall through a spiraling conspiracy. Shortly after this, after a meeting with Rodrigo, the military group known as the Crush of Preto sends an attack on Bronco's business. After fending them off, Max realizes they were just a distraction for an assassin to kill Rodrigo. Now what's really messed up here is the fact that Max kills like 50 dudes whose primary objective was literally to be a distraction and to die. That's fucked up. After the building burns to the ground, Max decides he might be doing a better job if he wasn't constantly fit chased and high out of his mind all the time from painkillers even though you still use painkillers as a healing item throughout the rest of the game. Anyways, so he shaves his head, tries to go sober, and heads out to find clues. While Max is searching the favelas, he runs into a police officer named Wilson De Silva, who clues Max in on some of the shady dealings going around. You see, he knows something, and Max knows he knows something, but he doesn't know how much Max knows, so what he knows he keeps from Max from Max knowing what he knows. If you haven't figured it out by now, also this is the third game in the series, a whole bunch of shady shit involving the military and corruption is going down, including black market organ sales and political leader blackmail bribery. So a good time overall, is what I'm saying. John Woo, Hard Boiled, Chow Yun Fat, The Matrix, Shrek. <laughs> Slow motion and fire the two guns whilst jumping through the air is what many of us know Max Payne to be, and you'd be right. But now that Rockstar is behind the entire project instead of Remedy, with the use of their Rage Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, 
there's a lot more depth than just dodging and shooting. Max is now limited to two small weapons and one main two-handed weapon, depending on which weapon you want to have equipped. I'll explain more about this in a minute. Max has gone the realistic route. He doesn't have any secret weapons hidden up his cooter anymore. He doesn't have a grenade launcher in his leather jacket. He only has what he can hold in two hands. Going back to what I just said a minute ago, Max can have a main two-handed weapon, but if you would like to go classic akimbo style, Max has to drop his two-handed weapon to do so. But if you'd like to keep holding the two-handed weapon, then Max can select one of his sidearms, to which he will then hold his main weapon in his offhand. Not only is this detail very practical and realistic, it will also change the way that Max moves due to his weight being off balance. When Max dives to the air whilst shooting two guns, he will brace for impact before landing, or he'll have a different landing depending on what surface you hit or if you were too close to the wall. The gunplay and shoot dodging actually feel better than ever. It's still a bit arcadey even with the inclusion of an arcade game mode, but with just enough realism. The cover mechanics are solid, with cover that will fall apart the more damage it takes, also due to the infrastructure in the current area that you're in. If you're in the favelas where the majority of the buildings are made of wood, you watch as they get shot to pieces as you take cover, opposed to the concrete walls and barriers in the cities. The shoot dodging feels solid and entertaining to the point where every shoot dodge sequence feels like a movie. This isn't even mentioning the scripted bullet time moments where Max does some crazy suicidal stunt and shoots every mofo on the way down. Or up. The game also does well in nudging you to make certain decisions and create your own cinematic moments. For instance, this particular enemy throws his grenade at Max's feet, causing the player to panic and dodge out of the way, resulting in this epic moment. Not scripted, just reactive. Max Payne 3 is also a pretty difficult game. It is quite easy to die from all the enemies you have to face. This is where Max's infamous painkillers come in. Now, the painkillers can be used as regular health items to heal Max's silhouette life bar, but they also have a secondary use. When Max takes fatal damage, he falls to the ground in slow motion, giving you the opportunity to take out your could-be murderer. Taking him out gives Max a second wind. This mechanic is great for testing out different methods of clearing rooms of enemies or using different weapons without the worry of making the wrong choice. Now this only works if Max has painkillers on him, which this game has become a little stingy with. Speaking of weapons, there are a lot of different weapons in this game, from revolvers, pistols, submachine guns, to automatic shotguns, assault rifles, and grenade launchers. Now it would be pretty dumb if every enemy you fought was the exact same, especially when you have such a colorful selection of weapons. Max Payne 3 has a beautiful way of keeping the combat fresh while retaining its realism. The different enemy factions you fight will have different weapons due to their association. For instance, the Slumdog Pirates will be using AKs and MAC-10s due to them being more cheaply made and readily available, while the military group will be decked out in bulletproof gear and sporting FALs with scopes and laser sights to Desert Eagles and AA-12s. Also, the way their bodies ragdoll differ depending on what they wear. With the tank top and shorts laden enemies, you watch as the bullets tear right through them. While the Crush of Preto and their body armor, you watch as the impact is stopped by their armor, but the force still follows through, resulting in some great looking ragdolls. Now, with all this realism and attention to detail, there is one lingering factor that has always bothered me, and there is no suspension of disbelief here that can fix this. It's an issue I actually have with all Rockstar games. I understand that in real life, if you just get shot once, you'll die. So with all this gritty realism, why is it that Max can still get shot a hundred times and still be moving? Now I understand it's a video game, and normally I can look past it, but in Rockstar games, the bullet wounds stay on your character for a good amount of time, even through cutscenes to where it's blatantly in my face. So when there's a bullet hole right where Max's heart is, it's hard to look past it. It's nitpicking for sure, but it's always there for me. Even in Red Dead Redemption 2, when they do the same thing with Arthur. No, I, I have not stopped. I'm, I'm, I'm recording right now, actually. Yeah, I, I just haven't uploaded anything because I don't have Wi-Fi. Of course, I, pay, I paid my bills. I, just, I moved to a new house, so I don't have Wi-Fi right now. 
yeah, once once I get Wi-Fi, then I'll upload again consistently. Okay, I just give it a little bit. I'm I'm almost done. All right, bye. Max Payne 3 is an interesting game, when it is a game. The game overall took me just about 9 hours to finish, which is a decent length for a game, except that the cutscenes in this game take up a good 3.5 hours of it. Like no joke, the Max Payne cutscene videos you see on YouTube max out at 3.5 hours. So 5.5 hours are pure gameplay, which feels a little short for a Max Payne game. And now gone are the iconic comic book cutscenes. Instead we get camera transitions, filters that flash in every few seconds, which actually makes me feel very concerned for people who may be epileptic. Many people hated this new style of cutscenes, and I do agree that it is obnoxious and intrusive. But that's kind of the point. The cutscene visuals are supposed to recreate the feeling of a drunken night, a painkiller high, a lingering hangover, or even a sudden concussion, depending on the situation. That's the theme they were trying to convey, but towards the end, after Max has kicked the alcohol and abusing painkillers, these filters still happen. So is that really what it was supposed to simulate, or did they just really like the effect? Underneath all the filters, though, is an incredibly detailed and gorgeous game. Remember how everyone was hyping how amazing the graphics were in GTA V? Same deal. Max could show up in GTA 5 and fit in perfectly. Minor details help the graphics, such as Max's hair slowly growing as the game progresses after he shaves his head, the sweat stains on his shirt get more and more uh, and not to mention the injuries Max gets throughout the course of the game remain and even begin healing throughout the campaign. James McCaffrey returns to voice Max and brings his absolute A game, although I feel like he doesn't get as many witty lines as he used to. What the hell does BB stand for, anyway? Backstabbing bastard? I'm Frankie to bet Niagara. Niagara, as in you cry a lot? Or kissing the mouth of a gun? A bullet trembling in its dark mist, ready to blow your head off? I don't speak your fucking language! Also, everyone who isn't Max or Passos is pretty annoying. Especially Marcelo. Okay, I understand that's his character, but... Uh, the music, as sad as I am to say it, is also very bare bones. No tracks stick out as incredible or intriguing as The Late Goodbye did. Luckily, there's a small character arc between Max and a piano. And, for a few seconds, came harmony. Finally. Max Payne 3 seems to get a bad rap quite a lot, and I never understood why. The game is fantastic, even if the cutscenes are incredibly intrusive. When you do get to control Max, the combat is intense, his fish out of water story is compelling, and you really want to see where it goes, especially as Max is incredibly self-destructive. I'd love for Max to come back in another sequel, or for a full reboot of the franchise. What started off as just a love letter to John Woo style action films with a character with a cheesy name became a staple and an icon. Overall, I give Max Payne 3 a solid 4 shoot dodges out of 5. As a game I would let my son play, I'm not gonna lie, there is a few risque moments in this game and they do not hold back on the violence and the grittiness. I myself was pretty young when I played this and found myself shocked at some of the things I saw. Like, if my dad caught me playing this, he might take it away. So this one I have to say, give it a few years. For nostalgia value, it's weird to think that this game already can be considered nostalgic. But when I come back to it, I get excited all over again to shoot dodge my way to victory as my favorite drunken depressed ex-cop. It started at the end. Because of course it does. It always started from the end. To get from the end to the beginning, we need to go through the middle. We've seen the end. Now let's take a look at the middle.